before I begin this video, this manga contains heavy depictions of gore, nudity, and other content that might be triggering for certain audience. I will be using these images during the video, but will try to blur them as much as possible within the context. Just a little bit of a warning here. So, remember before, you know, the entirety of 2020 happened and traveling was still a thing? Back then, to some, the biggest worries were, did I pack enough underwear? Are we gonna make it on time to the airport? And of course, to those with a fear of flying, it was, what if the plane crashes and we end up stranded on a random island? In today's manga, we will be answering this question, but with a bit of a twist. The island we're gonna land on is covered with giant carnivorous insects. Sounds fun, doesn't it? The Island of Giant Insects is a monster survival manga written by Yutsuke Fujimi and is illustrated by Reed Dice and Hiroshi Shu. The story follows a group of students who have crash landed on an island filled with, as the name suggests, giant insects. The group is led by Mitsumi Oribe, the class nerd who has always had an interest in bugs ever since she met a certain scientist in her childhood. She does her best to lead the group through the island as safely as possible, which, considering the genre of this manga, does involve a lot of death. Students get their blood drained, teachers get ripped in half, and generally speaking, you can say they are not having a great school trip. In the end, they do manage to get their way off the island, only to discover there are still more bugs out there, but that is something for the sequel manga, which we hopefully will never be covering in the future, because, as I will explain later, that one will get me demonetized from the first second it's online. Now, from that synopsis, you might feel like I left out a lot of details, which, yes, I did, for one simple reason. This manga has a very repetitive structure in its story. While not always the same structure, parts of its story do fall into a few categories. You have moments of rest. These moments are where characters don't get attacked or killed, and they are able to interact with one another. This is the part they usually decide what they're going to do, where to go, and where most of the character drama happens. Next up is the bug attack. An insect gets introduced with some exposition from Mitsumi what it is and how they can possibly battle it, then the actual attack happens, and the length of this can differ a bit depending on the specific insects, but these are usually the longest and, in my opinion, the best parts of the story. After this, they usually manage to defeat or outsmart the insects and get out of the way with at least one person dying or getting injured. The next and final category can be labeled as the reason you should not be reading this manga in public. To describe this best, you know how every horror slasher movie has this couple that even though there is someone out there testing the new chainsaw on their friends, all they can think about is what the inside of their pants is telling them to do. Yeah. Now imagine 90% of the cast being that. I'll be going deeper into characters later on in the video, but this category of the story always involves some level of sex, nudity, or insects. And yes, that was insects with an X. You will see later on. To give you an example of these categories in the story, let's take a look at the forest of ticks. The group just managed to escape a giant wasp nest and ends up running into a forest of ticks. As they arrive, Mitsumi explains to the group what they should do to walk safely through the forest. This all goes well until they run into their teacher who clearly didn't read the book on what not to do on a first date with a tick. This results in the group narrowly escaping them and Mitsumi telling everyone to get into the salt water to make sure there are no ticks hopping along for the ride. During this moment in the salt water, 4 out of 9 people, of which 2 are unconscious by the way, so more like 4 out of 7, end up doing very close inspection on each other. After this, they have a moment of rest, they regroup and plan out their next action. Of course, the order can be different, but the story almost always follows this kind of pattern, until you get towards the final climax of the story and they make their way off the island. The manga does it well to make its insects parts as strongest and longest, because everything else is pretty weak. The sex and nudity in the manga can, bar a few cases, be fully removed from the manga and it would not change the story at all as a lot of the times the characters themselves don't even reference back to anything of the sorts happening. Even when Mitsumi herself gets almost raped, it's forgotten a few chapters later as if it never happened. This really breaks the immersion and it clearly shows that the nudity itself actually has no need in the story. Now when it comes to the moments of rest, in theory these are very good to have. These are moments that should be used to develop the characters, their connections and do some exposition. But well, oh boy, let's talk characters, shall we? <laughs> So, remember how a few minutes ago I talked about that oversexed couple in horror movie trope? Well, besides most of the characters needing to get their hormone levels checked out, they aren't that cookie cutter compared to most monster survival manga. They are for the most part what can be considered pretty uncommon archetypes for the genre, 
but don't be fooled there. This doesn't mean the characters are very deep or intricate, it just means they are lost potential. Starting off with Mitsumi, her moral compass is clearly aimed towards the justice and saving as many people kind of side, even though some of these people try to get her killed on multiple occasions. She is really the heroine with all the knowledge and without her the group would have died at the first butterfly they run into. And yes, this does happen, but we will be going into the actual bugs themselves soon enough. The rest of the main group consists out of Matsuoka, the sporty leader of the softball team and kind of the vice president of the Bug Island Survival Club, Chitose, Mitsumi's best friend, Bug Magnet and the pretty girl you don't want to see angry, Mami, the nice idol girl who is scared of bugs and just wants a senpai to protect her, Gino, the dominatrix, and lastly Kai, the chill dude who just follows order and just wants to stay alive. There are of course more characters but they are mainly just walking bug food. Now, the description I've just given you for all these characters is kind of what you get at chapter 1 and mostly what you end up with when they get to the boat and leave the island. And most of the characters make a total 180 in personality where the dominatrix suddenly cares for the group and wants to save them or the nice girl who manipulated her senpai into protecting her cries the hardest when her senpai actually dies. But these changes usually last for only specific points in the story and they tend to revert back to their base form afterwards. Considering the genre and the length of the story, this is not specifically a bad thing. It's pretty common in monster survival stories to not have the most competent and realistic of characters, as most of them die anyway. But it does make it harder for us to care for the character outside of a cute design or sad backstory. Hence the case of Lost Potential. All of these characters had a lot of potential to be built into well-written and realistic people, but the focus of the manga is truly the insects. So let's follow the manga's example and change the focus on the real stars of the show. The insects are what really make this manga shine. Unlike a lot of monster survival mangas where you can change the monsters to something else and the story still works, the island of giant insects stays very true to its name. The entire story would not work if you change the monsters because all the dangerous scenarios come from the different abilities and specialties of each of the insects. To name some examples, the first insects they run into is the black swallowtail butterfly. This butterfly is there for one simple reason, to tell us the readers that no matter how innocent an insect may seem on this island, it wants you dead. Period. The girl that runs into them not only gets semi-raped, but also gets her blood drained by them. Shortly after, they run into the Amaphila wasp, who kidnaps Chitose and leads the group into a rescue mission. Now, at this point you could say you could swap them out for any flying monsters and it would still be the same. And that will be true, except for what happens after the group makes it out of the forest and ticks. During the rescue mission, one of the group members gets stung. And while the group does manage to make it out alive and make it to a hospital, they find out that he was infected with a parasite. The Green Bandit Brute Sack, to be specific. Now, that name may not say a lot to most people, but I bet a lot of you have heard of the zombie snail or seen this picture before. This is a parasite that takes over its host and spreads by getting itself eaten by bigger creatures. Now, you can imagine what happens if this parasite makes its way inside a human body that is part of a group that doesn't want to be eaten. Yeah, this is how the next box makes its appearance. And this is one of many examples of specific and creative way this manga handles its monsters. Combined with the realistic level of art for the insects and gore, certain panels will really manage to make your skin crawl just because of the idea of being in their position. Even if the story lacks, the characters are mostly forgettable and there's a lot of over excessive nudity, the insects are what really make you want to read more. You want to see the creative way they are being used and how they battle them. And this is why the second manga in my opinion is less good. It's lost the balance that the first one has and focuses a lot more on characters and a lot more on nudity, which takes away a lot of the attention from the actual insects and the monsters themselves. Taking a step back to my point I was making about its art style, something that will be very difficult to do with this manga is translate it into anime. Because yes, someone somewhere in Japan thought the bug sex manga needed to be animated. The manga got an OVA and an anime movie. Like everybody else, I do recommend the anime movie if you really want to watch it, but neither of them is the greatest thing ever made on screen. This mainly has to do with the fact that they had to of course censor a lot of the anime and they had to make the choice to animate the bugs in CGI. I can understand that due to the fact that the bugs are very complicated and turning that into traditional animation is a hell. But the fact that they also decided to keep the humans in 2D animation but the bugs in 3D CGI 
This results in a weird look whenever they interact with each other. This ruins a big chunk of what made the original manga so interesting in the first place. On top of that, the anime only goes up to the point where they reach the hospital, and the bug that comes after that is the final boss of the anime. While the actual final boss of the manga is a giant boat crushing centipede. But this is a manga review, not an anime review. If you would like me to review the anime movie, let me know in the comments below. The Island of Giant Insects is a weird manga that you either hate, love, or just feel very confused by. It's more like a guilty pleasure kind of manga, where you know you should not be reading all this fucked up stuff, but you just can't stop reading it. The characters are just interesting enough to keep you invested, the bugs are the main attraction, and the art is what pushes it into the edge to make it more memorable. The story itself is not the greatest, but hey, who reads a monster survival manga for its story? I give The Island of Giant Insects a 6.5 out of 10, with the recommendation to only read the first manga unless you really want to know the full story. For those interested in another manga who uses its monsters very well, I recommend Biomeat Nectar. If you're more looking for just weird, painful death, I'd say give the manga Freak Island a try. Now, until the next video, and have a lovely day. Cags out.